Good morning, good morning, Hoover United Methodist Church family. We're so excited to see you virtually online. Uh, this is February Black History Month, and it's also Health and Wellness Month here at Hoover Church. We want you to take care of you. And we're excited about some of the upcoming things that are happening here at Hoover United Methodist Church. Singles, get ready. We have some things planned for you all in a few days. And also, senior ministry. Those of you that are interested in being a part of the senior ministry here at Hoover, we invite you to participate and get involved. Contact the church, and uh, we'll let you know more about that information. Wow, so uh, I'm, I'm so excited. Number one, it's Black History Month. Say yes. it loud, I'm black and I'm black proud. Black and proud, yes. And glad to be that. It's a beautiful thing. Yes. I'm excited because Lunzel is with me. And, and I'm excited to be here with you. Right, and the thing about it is the rest of the year, Hoover family and anybody else who wants to join us, we are going to be engaging. We're going to do more than just participate in worship, yes. right? Yes, ma'am. We talked about the singles ministry. Yes. Well, I'm not single, but uh, yeah, for those, I'm not a single girl. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but for he liked it, so he put a ring on he it. He put a ring on it. Okay, <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay, but anyhow, so yeah. we are excited about what God is doing. And the thing about Hoover, we enjoy having fun. You know, we want to keep it light. So in the chat, if you will put, uh, 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 say it loud, I'm yes. black and I'm proud, or say it loud, I'm praising the Lord. Yes. I said loud, I'm going to do God's will. We are excited about that. So I have a couple of announcements I'll share. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So you all know Wednesday for us is the day of learning. Uh, it is strictly about discipleship. Good. So we have prayer call at noon, every Wednesday at noon. You'll see the information there in the chat on our Facebook page, on our website. Join us for that prayer time. Lord, we need prayer. It's yes, so much happening. Yes, definitely. We need to hear the voice of God and know what to do, the next step in our lives. Yes. Amen. And you know what? We prayed for you. Do you know we prayed for you while you were? Well, tell us where you... I was in Ethiopia. I was in the motherland. I appreciate the prayers. I came back safely, arrived there safely, had no issues, no, no problems. God blessed me. So I appreciate you all for praying and interceding for me while I was gone. Thank Amen. you, Pastor. And we were really praying, too. I appreciate yes. that, yes. So, <laughs> so again, that happens at noon. And then uh, on Wednesday evenings at 6 o'clock, we share a Bible study with our sister church, Wesley Chapel. It's amazing. Right. It's via Zoom. Again, that's another opportunity. 
We want you to be engaged. Yes. Get involved. Share the word. Participate in Sunday school. There are many ways you can do that. Yeah. So please, ma'am, please, sir, like come and on share. Now. Join well, us here. Yeah. We need you. We need yeah. you. And if you can't be involved um, in person, just like and share. Uh, share the ministry. Share the word with your family and friends. They're on Facebook and social media. That is great. So this morning, right now, right now, listen up. You can share this worship service. You can start right. They can start right start now. Start right now. Yeah. No, right, no time right, like right, the present. Right. All right. And so the other thing that will be happening, the Black Methodists for Church Renewal have two events happening on uh, with the youth. There will be a Black History Trivia, February 16th, 7 p.m. Go to our Facebook page. You'll see that. They will be giving cash prizes. Oh, wow. Yeah, last year we had a few of our young people who got some of that cash. We mm. cash up you the money. So yes. Young people, you want to make sure you're a part of that. And then also, uh, Black Methodist for Church Renewal will have a black history gala okay. it will be a time to stretch your ethnic attire nice it'll be a soul food luncheon mm. we're gonna have soul music it's a time of fellowship nice you know, and it's gonna be safe it's in a large venue uh and that we want to make sure you come out too don't be afraid it is going to be a great time there is a small donation again check out our facebook page we're just glad to be here right yes hey, man we are excited to be yeah. here yes. so, so God has, so God has been good. we gave y'all a lot to, to deal with, yes. a lot to hear, a lot to do. And I just want to say uh, thank you. Thank you. I want to thank the AV ministry, Jesus. Let's give them a hand yes. of praise. Yes, yes. Say hallelujah, AV ministry. They yes. make this happen every Sunday yes. just for you. You're special to us. Yes. God bless you and enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you again. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Uh, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, we give your name the glory and the honor. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, God that have brought us this far, God you have brought us through so many different trials and tribulations and ups and downs through slavery, through segregation, through discrimination, and God now through COVID, and God we believe that you're going to bring us through COVID-19. And God, we ask that you would continue to bless us, continue to keep us, oh God, in the center of your will. Protect us, oh God, as we journey on through uh, this thing called life. And God, we give you praise and we glorify you right now. And God, we ask that you would continue to bless the ones that are, are sick and afflicted, the ones that are broken, broken hearted, broken spirits, and broken in their health. God, we ask that you would go into the homes and go into the churches and go over, go over they are in the hospitals, oh God to be the comfort and the healer that you are, God. We thank you right now for being who you are, and that is a healer. God, we ask right now that you would continue to bless this Hoover Church as we journey on through the mission and the call that you have put us in in this city and in this time. God, continue to bless the pastor and the leadership of Hoover and bless, oh God, the, the congregants, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for the, the members that, and the visitors and the friends that are, are associated with Hoover United Methodist Church. And we ask that you would continue to bless this ministry, bless the pastor, oh God, as she come and bring the word and life to your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We've come to a time and service when all of us can show how much and prove to God how much we love Him. And what time is that? It's offering time. Your gifts enables us to continue serving the community, which we are so grateful for those who give regularly. 2 Corinthians says, 2 Corinthians verse, chapter 9, verses 6 through 8 say, Remember this, whosoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whosoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you. So then all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work as it is written. Here at Hoover, we have three ways because of the pandemic. Normally we have four ways, but we have three ways because of the pandemic on how you can show God how much you love him. The first way is you can mail a check. You can mail that check to 4000 West 13th Street, and that's Little Rock, Arkansas, 72204. The second way 
is uh, online giving. Here at Hoover, we call that Givelify. It's, uh, uh, we, that's the most popular way here at Hoover for you to give. It's convenient and, uh, and uh, you know, it, it, it really doesn't cause that much uh, effort in terms of you giving. Uh, the other way is you can bring your, 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 your gifts up here and drop it in the slot here at the church. And we have somebody that comes by every week and picks up your gifts. And again, I want to thank you for being so generous and giving from the heart and showing God just how much you really, really, really care for him. Now at this time, I would like to give an offertory prayer. If you would, bow your heads. God of this day and of all days, we can only imagine the darkness of the world into which you sent your son, a world that believed that salvation rested on our ability to follow the rules. Jesus came to bring light into that darkness and into our darkness. As we bring our tithes and offerings to you this day, transform them, Lord, into light for the hungry, for the hopeless, for the forgotten, and for the oppressed. We will share his light in us. In Christ we pray, amen. my direction you're the compass for my way you're the fire and light when nights are long and cold in sadness you are the laughter that shatters all my when I'm all alone, your hand is there to hold, hold. Jesus, you're the center of my soul. It is now time for us to worship together through the message. Let us go to prayer. Father God, again, we come to your house, Father, ready to worship and praise you. We come to your house, Father, whether we're in the sanctuary at home or we're in our car, but we come to your house, Father, ready to hear a word from you, Father. I pray, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be accepted by you, Father. I pray that I can be your vessel. Use me, God, to share a word today to your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Again, we are ready to worship the Lord. This is a time of engagement. This is a time of prayer. This is a time where we celebrate and learn and hear the word from God. So during the last month, the month is February already. We just ended January and it rushed right through. But during January, our sermon topic was on commitment. It was on commitment. And in 2022 here at Hoover Church, we're going to be focused and we're going to focus on how do we be engaged beyond the worship experience? How do we go out into the community? How do we pray? How do we participate in Bible study? How do we give? We're going to be focusing up on engagement the whole year. So get ready, family. Get ready, church family. But this month in February, the word that we're going to use for our sermon topic is focus. F-O-C-U-S. Okay, I want five people to put in chat, focus. Okay, I saw one. Oh, there's two, three. Hey, thank you. Engaging, being involved in worship. So this month, February is going to be about focus. Let me hear you say focus. Yeah, I heard you. You said focus. So we want to be able to, to shift from what we did last year. We want to make some things happen here differently. We want to be focused and engaging in every aspect and stand focused on Jesus. Stand focused on Jesus. So now that last month you made your commitment, if you haven't, I pray that you'll do that soon. I pray that you're praying about it. Let's talk about focus. So this morning my sermon topic is 
Stay focused on Christ. Stay focused on Christ. Let me tell you what happened to me a few times. Y'all might can identify with this. Uh, a year or so ago, I was on my way to a trip in Nashville, Tennessee for a uh, Strengthening Black Church Conference. I was driving and all of a sudden my phone rung, but my phone was in my purse. So as I was driving down the highway, you know, speed limit, I'm a little bit over, all of a sudden I wanted to reach to get my phone. I was paying attention straight ahead to the highway and all of a sudden something told me you can get your phone. So what did I do? I reached over to get my purse to pull my phone out and guess what I did? I ran off the road, but praise the Lord, he was with me. He saved me. I wasn't hurt. I was embarrassed, but I was scared at that point on. So I know some of you probably have done something to distract you from what you were supposed to do. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever been in your house and you decided that you were going to go to the kitchen to get something, but on your way to the kitchen, you stopped and did something else. So by the time you got to the kitchen, because you were distracted, you forgot what you went to get. Again, stand focus. It's so easy to lose focus. So this morning, today, we're going to talk about how we keep our eyes and how we don't lose sight of what God wants us to do. So, so, so let, let, let's talk about this story, the scriptures this morning that we're going to use is when Jesus told his disciples to focus on him. And so Peter lost focus. So I'm going to invite you, I'm going to invite you to get your Bibles out wherever you are. Go to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation and we're going to be looking at verses 22 through 33. What I'm going to do this time, we're going to, this Sunday, we're going to, I'm going to break these into to different segments. But let's start first in verse 22. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 24 read, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell when he was there all alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. That's verses 22 through 24. So Jesus had just finished with the miraculous feeding of 5,000 people. He had, they had just finished that. Jesus had just finished that. So he told the disciples that they need to get away quickly because the people were so excited about Jesus feeding them all that they thought that they wanted to crown Jesus. And that's in John 6, 14 through 15. You can read that. So Jesus asked the disciples, because he knew he wasn't about to be crowned, crowned as the king. He told the disciples to get into the boat again and cross to the other side of the lake. He told them, go quickly. The disciples did just as Jesus had instructed them to do. But while Jesus was away praying, a strong storm comes. Amen. A strong storm comes. And the disciples became terrified because Jesus was nowhere to be found. You see, Jesus was still with them. He was praying. So, however, when Jesus finally came to the scene, he knew what was happening. Their fear increased. Why did their fear increase? Okay, let's read that. Matthew 14, 25 through 27. It says, about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. 
take courage. I am here. You see, the disciples were convinced that this was a ghost when actually it was Jesus. Once Jesus starts speaking, the first thing he says is what? Put it in the chat. He said, don't be afraid. I believe that when it comes to focusing completely on Jesus, there are three things that just do not have a place when we're gonna focus on Jesus. There are three things that don't have a place in that, okay? The first one is fear. We just heard that. Jesus wanted to focus on the disciples' reactions, their response. The reason they were afraid was why? They were afraid simply because Jesus was not present. And that's what happens to us. When we feel that Jesus is not present, then we lose focus and we become fearful. So they looked around the boat when the storm hit and, and they couldn't see Jesus. I mean, we need to remember that Jesus is always with us, even through the difficult circumstances, even through the sickness, even through the coronavirus, even through the hate crimes, even through the violence, Jesus is always with us. And guess what? He's working for our good in everything. He's working for your good. He's working for my good. You are never alone. We are never alone. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is always with us, even when we don't even see him. Amen. Nevertheless, even when he appeared walking on the water, they didn't they didn't think it was him. I, you could understand that. Jesus walking on water, even though he just fed 5,000 people, they still didn't think it was Jesus. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been there before? Have, have Jesus took care of you in a situation, in a bad relationship, and helping you to pass <laughs> to go to another level and complete that. Have you ever been in that place where you just didn't think Jesus was with you? But somehow, praise the Lord, he sees you through. He made something good turn out of what you thought wasn't going to happen. Have you ever been in a situation for a long time where you were focused on Christ? And when you were focused on him, he was able to get you through the road bumps. You were focused because you were watching him. You wasn't looking to the side. You were focusing on Jesus. We need to stay focused on Jesus. He will see us through. Amen. He's done it before and he'll do it again. But you know, there are going to be some storms. Amen. We're in some storms right now in this country. In this country. We're in some storms right now with all the hate. This is Black History Month. And things are happening that we never thought. But Jesus is with us. We will not take our eyes off of him. We will stay focused on Jesus. You know, fear can, fear can look many different ways in the middle of the storm. Fear can, some of us have storms right now that we're in. Some of us have a storm that, is, that we feel is caused because of what happened in the past. So we're looking back rather than looking forward. So don't look back, look forward. Look to Jesus. Don't look down. Look up to Jesus. He's there for you. He will carry you through. You know, some of us have storms because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Okay, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but we know who's in control. Amen. We know that if we look for Jesus, he's right there with us and he will see us through. Some of our problems is that we want to always know what's going to happen. And that's not where we are. We need to trust in God. Keep the faith and he'll carry us through. Yes, he will. So those disciples, yeah, they, they were dealing with some fear and got scared. Who wouldn't be afraid if you were in the water in a storm? I was on a cruise once, me and my best friend. And the waters were just bouncing and the ship was bouncing. Now, I'm going to be honest. I was fearful. <laughs> I was fearful. I don't know if I stayed completely focused on Jesus, but I was praying and he saw us through that. Saw us through the storm on that cruise ship. Thank you, Jesus. We should focus on God. Just focus on God, not your problem. Whatever that problem is, whatever that storm is, that wave is, focus on God. He will see you through. Just remember to keep looking forward. Don't look down, look up to Jesus. He will carry you through. I promise you, he will carry you through. 
And so the second thing is that happened in the scripture and Peter and the disciples situation, the storm was the distraction and it caused them to lose focus. Peter began to sink. Peter began to sink when he took his focus from Jesus. Let's read that in uh, 14, 29 through 30. Let, let me read that for you. It says, yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat, went over the side of the boat, walked on the water toward Jesus. He walked on the water toward Jesus. But, there's that but, it gets us in trouble every time. But when he saw the strong wind, the wind blowing, moving, he saw it, and he saw the waves bouncing, moving. He was terrified and began to sink. But Peter's smart. <laughs> Peter said, save me, Lord. He shouted, save me. You know, I was thinking about uh, uh, horses. Uh, at the horse race, I know some of y'all have never been, okay, right, but uh, I know some of y'all have. And, and trainers, what they normally do they put blinders on the horses who are racing. They put blinders on them because they want them to keep focus on what is in front of them. They want them to be focused. The blinders encourages them to pay attention. So that means that maybe we need some blinders so that we can pay attention to what's in front of us not what's behind us, not what's on side of us, not what's down. We can stay focused, staying focused on Jesus. We need to listen to God. We need to listen to God and not our insecurities. We need to, to listen to God. You see, there are many different distractions and I've talked about some of those. We face them today in our lives because, you know, church, the truth is, whenever, this is the truth, whenever, the devil cannot, whatever, whatever the devil cannot destroy, he will distract. Amen. Understand that. <laughs> if he feel like he can't destroy it, he's going to find something to distract you. And the enemy, the devil, wants you to get frustrated and quit. That's what he wants you to do. But God wants you to stay focused and succeed. That's what... That's why God is praying for us. That's why he's with us. So, so don't, don't let the devil stop your success. Don't, don't let the devil cause you to quit where you feel God has promised to take you. Keep walking. Stay focused. Forget about the distractions. You know, we get caught up sometimes, uh, and I'm guilty of this as well, where we, we get caught up on uh, social media. We get young people. We get caught up on the TikToks. When we can be studying our lesson, we can be possibly uh, doing an extra assignment, we can be doing something positive, but we get caught up on social media and seeing who like us and who don't like us and the TikToks and all. We get caught up on things that take us away from Jesus. We have to, young people, we have to, people, stay focused. Don't get distracted with the waves and the winds. He showed faith. Peter showed faith in Christ, even though it might have been a little faith, but guess what? He was willing to get out the boat. Oh! He was willing to get out the boat. Not only did he get out the boat, he got out the boat and he started walking on the water. He had faith. He had faith. Are you willing today to get out the boat? Number one, when the storms of life are raging, are you willing to get out the boat when times look tough? Are you willing to get out the boat when you don't have the money, when the relationship, are you willing to walk on the water and stay focused on Jesus? Are you willing? You know, some of us here today are living like Peter, but some of us living like Peter because he got out the boat and he was willing to walk. He had a little faith, but some of us are still stuck. Oh, <laughs> Some of us are still stuck in the boat. Some of us don't even have a little faith to get out the boat so that we can walk on water, so that we can show Jesus, I trust you. I'm willing to walk with you. 
I want to stay focused. And so when I feel like I'm sinking, then guess what? He pulls them up. Hallelujah. And he'll do the same. So what we have to do is stay focused and get out of the fears. You see, Peter understood. This is what Peter understood, y'all. Jesus has the power to sustain him. If only he would choose to get out the boat, he did, start walking, then the distractions became nothing. Peter looked to his left and to his right rather than looking straight ahead at Jesus. The winds and the waves will come, people, but we have to stay focused on Jesus. Put those blinders on. Stay focused on Jesus. And the Bible says that Peter lost his focus, right? And he sinks, but he calls for Jesus to save him. Is anybody out there calling for Jesus because you got distracted, you had fears? Are you calling on Jesus to save you? That's what God wants us to do. That's what he wants us to do. So let's, let's carry on now to Matthew 41, 31 through 33. We're about to end this. Praise the Lord. This is good to me. I don't know about y'all, but I pray that you are engaging and sharing about this message, about staying focused on Jesus. Hallelujah. And the scripture reads, Jesus immediately, whew, I like that word. Jesus immediately, he reached out and grabbed him. Oh, Jesus, please reach out and grab us today. We need you. You have so little faith, Jesus said. We talked about that. Why did you doubt me? Oh, my God. So, so there's fear, number one. There's distraction, number two. Now there's doubt. Why do you doubt me? What, why did you doubt me? So when they climb back into the boat, y'all, the wind stopped, the scripture said. The wind stopped when they, when they climb back in the boat. Oh, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worship him. You really are, they said, the son of God, they exclaimed. So let's talk about doubt just shortly. Peter had faith when he stepped out the boat. We said that when he stepped out the boat, he had faith. When he started walking, he had faith. He had his eyes on Jesus. He was focused. He was focused. You know, that was a song that they used to sing back in the, uh, many years ago. I can remember this lady singing this song and she would sing, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up, on this, woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Peter's mind was stayed on Jesus. However, he realized what he was doing. He was walking on the water in the middle of the storm. He stopped, started to get doubt. He started questioning. But people, this is the last thing. We have to rely on God. We have to rely on God. Not on your own strength. We don't have enough strength. We have to rely on God. So today you may be like Peter and you may have the questions and you may have fears and distractions and doubt. You might even be asking God, God, are you, are you really here? God, are you, are you really in the middle of this? God, can I really trust you? God, I got a little faith. God, will you save me? And he'll say yes. It might feel like that. There are going to be waves and, and, and motions in the water and things that are going to be happening to distract you. You know, with all the violence and everything that's happening, with the losses that we experience. But God is still with us today. All we have to do, people, is to stay focused on him. God bless and amen. So this morning, this morning, as we, as I present to you, as I give to you the invitation, you know, the, the final thing about this invitation is this. This is the invitation. We're inviting you. We're inviting you to become a member of this family. But in, in this invitation, I want you to remember that we should focus even in the midst of the storm. You know why? Because Jesus' peace is all around us. At the end of this passage, verse 32, we read that the wind immediately, the wind immediately stopped when Jesus got into the boat. Now, I won't say that it will immediately stop for you wherever your storm is, but you got to be willing and you can come to us and get out the boat and we will walk with you to make sure that you stay focused on Jesus. That's the invitation today. Let us pray. 
Let us pray. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we are tempted to focus on things around us rather than focusing on you. So, Father, today we want to be truly guided in this world, in our lives by you. And so, therefore, God, we completely turn it over to you. Help us, Father, to look up at you, to look up, to look straight at you. Not to look down, not to look around, God, but allow us to realize that you will guide us through all that we go through. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Stay focused on Jesus Christ. God bless. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and seek to grow into his likeness. Let us draw near with him, make our humble confession, and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. So at this time, we invite you to take your cup. Uh, if you don't have a pill, pill and pour cup, you can get coffee or juice or water, whatever it is, cracker, your toast, which represents the body of Christ. After taking the bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup. In the same way, he took the cup after the meal and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. Take and drink, and remember that this is the blood of Christ, which was shed just for you. a whole day since I stopped so you could hold me but this child awaits strong in the faith Lord you are the refuge that I can't wait to get to cause I can't let a day go can't let a day go by without thanking you for the joy that you bring to my life and Not a big deal, let it wash all the bugs off my windshield Cause you're showing me